Hello and welcome to my tutorial on how to hook up your PlayStation 3 controllers to your computer. In this tutorial I'm going to be basically teaching you how to transform your PlayStation 3 controller into an Xbox 360 controller. In other words, making the computer think it's one. That way it's compatible with all the games that take Xbox 360 controllers and blah blah blah. And by the way, what I love about this method, about what I'm about to teach you is all you do is hit the button on the controller and it works! You don't have to like go into Motion and Joy and hit Enable every time you re restart the computer or log in. Oh, that's such a pain. But for those of you who have no idea what Motion and Joy is, uh, don't worry because I'm going to teach you step by step. And you don't actually have to worry about Motion and Joy because that's an old thing to me now. It's like in the past. What it is basically is it's a program that allows you to hook up the a PlayStation 3 controller into the computer and make it function as an Xbox 360 controller and it was just kind of like totally ridden with ads and everything so it's kind of like the only thing that worked and you just had to deal with it until now. Well anyway on to the tutorial so what we're going to be wanting is the X input wrapper also known as SCP-DS3. I'm not sure what the official name is on it. Um, that confuses me, but I'll give you all the down the links in the description. Just follow along. Basically, go on there and click download latest version here, and then you've got it. Now, before you can use this, you have to get the Microsoft Xbox 360 update or whatever. I'll give you the link. That'll be the second link in the description, so get that first. If you have Windows 7, install it now. Otherwise, if you have XP or Vista, wait until after you install the other thing and then install the Xbox 360 thing. So once you get it, it should be called SCP-DS3 driver package and then the version number. And it's a 7-zip file, so you're going to need some kind of you know WinRAR or 7-zip thing to get it extracted first. So do that. Extract it first. I would recommend maybe putting it in your C drive and just name, create a new folder and name it like, I don't know, PlayStation 3 controller driver or something and just extract it to there. However, if you're using Windows Vista or Windows 7 and you have the UAC, which it does come enabled, so if you have that, um, you're going to have to put it somewhere where it likes it, mainly on your desktop or your downloads or somewhere in the users folder. So in other words, if you haven't disabled UAC on your own, leave it in the downloads folder and just extract it to the downloads folder or put it in your desktop or maybe in your documents. I personally think UAC is a pain in the butt, so I don't use it. I disable it and I don't have these problems. Very quickly, if you happen to want to disable UAC because of what I just said or something, it's in the control panel. Just search UAC in the control panel. You'll find it. Okay, so by now you should have the Xbox 360 update or whatever and extracted version of what you just downloaded for the thingy that we're getting. So now what you want to do is connect your, if you have Bluetooth, connect it now and also connect your controller to the computer through the USB cable. If you don't have Bluetooth, don't worry, it doesn't matter. You can still use it through the cable. Okay, so now go into the SCP DS3 driver package thing that I told you to extract. Go in there and go until you find the bin folder. Then go inside there and then you'll see scpdriver.exe. So run that. You might not see the .exe, don't worry about that. So run that and then once the installer pops up, Okay, so they say if you have Windows XP or Windows Vista, check the force install option. If you have Windows 7 or 8, leave it unchecked. And of course, if you use Bluetooth, leave that checked. And if you don't use Bluetooth, leave it unchecked or uncheck it. So now hit install, wait for it to finish, hope for the best. And then once it's finished, hit exit. If you have Windows XP or Vista, now run the Xbox 360 driver thingy. So now you're kind of done. You want to make sure your controller is actually being recognized as a controller. So go to your control panel and then go into the game thing, the game options, whatever, you know, the controller game area. 
just type in game in the search and it'll pop up. It'll say USB controller or whatever. Anyway, go into there. Make sure your controller is listed. Now it'll either be the PlayStation 3 controller or it'll say controller Xbox 360 blah blah blah. You want it to say controller Xbox 360 or whatever it says. You want it to say something like that because that means it's being recognized as the Xbox 360 controller and that's what you want. If nothing is showing then you probably didn't do the Xbox 360 update that I first told you to do. And if you did, then I don't know, maybe something went wrong, maybe reconnect the controller. But otherwise, we should be in the, in the area where it's showing a controller of some sort. So at this point, if you're planning on using Bluetooth, you should just be able to unhook the controller and hit the PlayStation button. And then it'll connect to your Bluetooth adapter. And then you'll see your controller lit up player one, whatever. You can also use multiple controllers. I've never tried it, but you can apparently do that also. And I guess you just hit the button on those two and they'll connect. Or I guess if you're using USB, you can just connect them to a bunch of USB ports. I'm not really sure. I've never done it. Okay, so you're probably going to end up wondering, where's all the configuration? Is there any way to configure it? Yeah, there is. Um, in the same thing that I told you to extract, there's... Well, it's right next to the SCP driver thing. It's called Win32 or Win64, depending on which, you know, operating system are you using, 32-bit or 64-bit. So choose that one appropriately for your system. Go in there, and then it's called scpuser.exe, and that will pop up a thing that will allow you to control, I guess, uh, dead zones, and it'll let you test your buttons out and different other things. I'm not really sure. I, I don't really use it. I think it'll let you... There's another thing on there that will let you see your battery status. That's called SCP Monitor, and that will show you whether you're high, low, charge, whatever. And also the controller will blink the LED light. It'll blink when you're low on battery or getting low. I tend to notice that it lasts about a couple hours after blinking. So to me, that's not low, low, but it's telling you you should get charging within the next couple hours, probably. And plugging it in during a game isn't going to affect anything. That's what I love about this. It's like you could plug it in, unplug it. It's not going to affect the game. Unlike the other one, Motion Enjoy, where if you unplug it, it ruins everything. It like completely shuts off the controller part of the game, and it might even glitch the game. So this one actually keeps the controller hooked up in Windows, so no matter even if your controller is hooked up or not, it still sees the controller is on, I think. It does it somehow. It does it somehow in the way that it just plugs in or unplugs without even affecting anything, so that's really cool. And speaking of Motion & Joy, if you're a user of Motion & Joy or were a user, you might know the thing about having to click Enable after a restart and having an internet connection every time. Ugh, all those problems are gone with this method because all you have to do if you're on Bluetooth, just hit the button and it connects. Simple as that. If you don't have Bluetooth uh, connected in the computer, simple as that. You don't have to hit any enable buttons. It's like automatically started with the computer. By the way, the buttons are pressure sensitive. So it does have pressure sensitivity. So if you want to play a PlayStation 2 emulator, with all the different plugins that have the sensitivity and all that, you can. I'm not exactly sure how, but I'm sure the info is somewhere and it shouldn't be too hard because if you go into the SPC user thing or whatever the thing that shows you what buttons you're pressing, it will have like different numbers according to how hard you press it. So of course that means it's pressure sensitive and it is working and it works for each of the buttons that have the pressure sensitive blah 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 blah. So that about does it for the tutorial. I think that's about it. Um, if I miss something, I'm sure you guys will all let me know in the comments, right? So I'll just say I hope that was everything and I hope it works for you. And if you like this video, feel free to click like and make a comment and anything you want to say, say it. And I think that's about it. I don't like motion and joy. I like this one. And bye.